Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. Our next guests have persevered against all odds and through sheer grit and determination, they've all become doctors. Yes, aside from making their families extremely proud, they are on a personal mission to change the way the world views black men. Please welcome the authors of Pulse of Perseverance, Dr. Joseph Simeon, Dr. Pierre Johnson, and Dr. Maxim Medea. I got it right. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, gentlemen. Y'all looking Hello. good? Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Appreciate it. No scrubs today? Absolutely no. not. Yes. No stethoscopes. I, no. I see gold chains. No, chain. this is how we are every day. That's, That's how you right. are every right. day. And that is why day. you wanted to dress this way today, because you want to show people, hey, we're doctors, but we're regular people as well. You gotta be yourself. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Man, you're so cool. Come on, doc. Okay, okay. So let's talk about <laughs> be becoming a doctor. You know, it's a calling. Yeah. So tell us about how you knew this is what you were going to do with your lives. So for me, um, I, I went through a lot of challenges in my life. Mm -hmm. And then it took um, some circumstances, particular when I was um, younger, um, my cousin got murdered. Okay. And when he got murdered, that formed a, like a transformation in my life that I said, you know what, I gotta do something different. Mm -hmm. And then I, as a child, I had always done things like cutting up um, insects and stuff. So <laughs> I knew, I was, I, was, I, I, knew <laughs> I was good with my hands. So the calling was there. It was, yeah. it was just ordained that yeah. I, I become a doctor. Yes. And then for, for me, you know, my, uh, my, my aunt challenged me at a very early age to not just want to be an athlete or a basketball player, a baseball player, and she asked me for a plan B. Mm -hmm. So I just said I wanted to be a doctor. Mm -hmm. And then as I got older, my, my youngest brother was, was born when I was nine years old. And the, just the transformation and, and childbirth and, and pregnancy was very, uh, was awing to me. Yeah. And I just wanted to learn more, more about it. So, you know, that's where it started. I wanted to be OBGYN. As I got a little older, I started cutting hair. I became a barber and I knew, really, I knew that I was, you know, very good with my hands mm -hmm. and dexterity wise. So then I got really, really into surgery. So for me, you know, OBGYN was the best of both worlds. Wow. Um, and lastly, for me, I come from a place where um, my family and my environment, they always stressed that we need more leaders. Mm -hmm. And so when I got to high school, um, I volunteered at a hospital called Howard University College of Medicine. Yes. Mm -hmm. And at that hospital, I saw black doctors. And when I looked at them, I looked at them as leaders in their own, in their own right, in their own communities. Mm -hmm. So I thought, what better way for me to impact my community and change my community by being a doctor and helping others? Man, yes. we can end the interview right here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we got a lot of, I know, okay, 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 a lot okay, more okay. to learn. I know. <laughs> go ahead, you know, go ahead, Ms. Kawhi. So, you know, we, talk, we heard a little bit about your childhood, um, but if I could ask this question to all of you, if there's one word to describe your childhood, what will it be? Mm. I would say um, double life. Ooh, double life. Double life. Wow. Interesting. Wow. I want, yeah. Elaborate a little bit on that for me. Well, you know, my mom, she was a minister. So I was going to church, you know, throughout praying and everything. But at the end of the night, at the end of the day, I was in the streets. I was mm. selling drugs. I was oh, doing wow. the things that, you know, that people in, in, in my community or my, my hood that I used to say was doing. So yeah. I love double your life. Yeah. How about you? I would say fast, mm -hmm. um, you know, because I had to grow up very fast. Like my parents were addicted to drugs, and drugs were rampant in my in my community and my in my household. And I had to learn very early um, that that's not what I wanted to do in my right. life. And I had yeah. to be responsible and be a father figure to my my younger siblings very early. So I was I was very focused fast. and driven at a very early Double age. Double life, fast and motivating. 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 Um, for the communities that I came from, I just knew I just wanted something more for myself and for my family. And mm -hmm. I wanted to essentially take my family to another level. Mm -hmm. And the only way that you can do that is to break some of the cycles that are within our communities. Yes, absolutely. So yeah. um, that, that's what my, my yeah. story is about. Let's talk a little bit about, you know, you, you all are very uh, accomplished and successful, but the road <laughs> to get there as far as going to, to medical school. Mm -hmm. My, my uh, brother-in-law is a thoracic surgeon in Chicago, mm -hmm. and we watched his whole walk, and it's like, oh, when is it going to be done? When is it going to be done? When y'all going to make some real money? Right. <laughs> so, but now they are. They're doing great. So talk to us about that journey, the pitfalls, the good, the bad, medical school, all of that. Well, you know, it, it's it's just that like we we went we had so many highs and lows and ups and downs. Like at the point where we met at Xavier, we were all failing. We mm. were all doing very bad, and and we ironically met in the library, really? struggling. Uh -huh. And you know, we knew it, that there was a, a passion and a burning desire. We could see it in each other's eyes. So when we got together, we just formed this brotherhood and this bond to say, you know, no matter what we go through, we're gonna push each other to get to this goal. Yeah. And that's just what we did. And just you know, no matter what, everything. 
that we came up against, it was it was never a failure. You know, it was a setback, and yeah. a setback was just a, a stepping stone to success. And that's what we treated everything. Well, no matter if, if one of us failed the test, we, we all, all failed the test. Yeah. Yeah. One of us did bad, we, we all, all did, did bad. bad. And if one of us didn't get a concept while we were studying, we nobody get it. And we're not leaving until that person got it and they could teach it back. So that's just how we lived our life. That's how we live our life today. And that's, oh, how, that's that. what we're trying to do in general. We're trying to make sure we know exactly where we came from. We know who we are. And we know that our kids and what they're going through. We know the experience of everything that they're going through. And the only way to do that, the only way to improve is to take reach back as we climb. Yeah. Take all of our kids that come from the circumstances we come from to the next level. Right. Mm -hmm. you know, because a lot of times, you know, we hear like, what does a doctor look like? And, what mm -hmm. is, and a doctor looks like you. Yes. A doctor looks like me. The stereotypical narrative of what a doctor's supposed to look like or what a lawyer's supposed to look like or what an engineer's supposed to look like, we, we're trying to destroy that negative I'm really narrative. really happy that you are. We're trying to destroy I'm, it. Yes, I mean, yeah. and this is not a facade. This is us every day, all day. Mm -hmm. And we want to show kids that there's more out here, uh, there's m the higher levels of success than just being a ball player or being right. an athlete. Let's talk really quickly about your book, um, Pulse of Perseverance. Tell us a little bit about that. What motivated you? So there's a couple of motivating factors. The first one is, number one, we want to make sure that we eradicate the undeveloped potential of black male students. Mm -hmm. um, number two is that everything that's been going on in the news cycle, um, particularly from particularly when Trayvon got shot, yes. and everything in the news cycle about how the world and ourselves, how we view ourselves as African American men. We want to make sure that we highlight all of our ex excellence in all facets possible. That's great. Mm -hmm. Great. And you also have a scholarship mm -hmm. fund as well? Yes. 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 Talk yes. briefly about that. Sure. Um, we have a scholarship in which um, we give in monthly mm -hmm. um, um, amounts, mm -hmm. like we give a certain amount for um, every month mm -hmm. to kids of high school mm -hmm. and colleges. What do they need to do in order to get this? They have to exemplify the pulse of perseverance. They have to show that they that they want higher levels of success and yeah. they can look at us and they can look at other examples in their community to show, you know, this is what I want to do and this is what I'm doing in my community mm -hmm. to get that. And then we're trying to give the resources for them to do it. Man, well, if they look at you all my and, God. and hear your stories, they're definitely going to do that. Thank you so yes. much yeah. for yeah. being who you are and being the pulse of perseverance. So if you want to continue uh, their amazing work and see their amazing work, look for their book, Pulse of Perseverance, where books are sold next time.